Something a little bit different today on Dotto Tech. We're going to get right back to basics and take a look at spreadsheets for beginners. Now, for many of us who have used computers for a long time, spreadsheets are second nature. We've been using them since 1979 when VisiCalc, the original spreadsheet, was released. And spreadsheets are such a core application. They are the reason the personal computer is as popular as it is today. The personal computer revolution was built on the back of spreadsheets and how valuable they were to businesses through the 80s and 90s. And everybody had to have a computer because they wanted to run a spreadsheet because it was such an amazing tool. Why is the spreadsheet such an amazing tool? What is so important about it? Well, let's take a look at that today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? And let's start looking at spreadsheets right within Google Drive. We're gonna use Google Sheets, which is Google's version of the spreadsheet for our demonstration today. Now the beauty of spreadsheets is they all work pretty much identically. In fact, when I create a new spreadsheet here in Google Sheets, the, the spreadsheet that I'm looking at doesn't look a lot different from the original spreadsheet VisiCalc back in 1979. And the main function, the main way that the spreadsheet works is pretty much identical over all of these years. The spreadsheet is a marvel of efficiency and simplicity. Although it could get incredibly complicated and do incredibly detailed and complicated things, the basic way spreadsheets work is actually quite elegant and simple. Spreadsheets are broken down into three basic areas. We have rows of information from top to bottom. We have columns of information from right to left. And we have regions where we select both rows and columns and we select a uh, region and that's called a range. We also have inside of the spreadsheet, the individual squares are called cells. Cells are very important. They're the building blocks of spreadsheets and cells contain the data that spreadsheet works, that spreadsheets work on. Now your data can be text, it can be numbers, it can be dates, it can be formulas, or it can be calculations. We can put lots of different data types into the cell and how we, and how we use those cells and how those cells react to the other cells around them is really how a spreadsheet ends up working and being valuable to us. I think we should just dive in and, and create a, a simple spreadsheet. The, the easiest way for you to understand it is to see it in practical in, in a practical application. So this is the simplest of applications. Let's say we're just trying to keep track of sales of, a, of an item in a store. So we're going to start with the date as our first data type. And we're going to have our data going from top to bottom. Uh, so our, we're going to have columns. So I'm going to put the date in the first column and I just type it into the cell. Actually, when I type it into the cell, I'm typing it into the equation bar here as well. The information that happens in this bar gets reflected in here, but sometimes it will look different. Sometimes we'll see a formula or a calculation in this bar and we'll see the results in the cell. That's one of the most important things to get your head around in spreadsheets is where the, where the input information is generated. So even though we feel like we're clicking in the cell, we're actually clicking in the, in the formula bar as we're entering the information. So next we're going to put date. The next thing we'll put down is we'll put down sales and see, I click back up in the top bar and you'll see that when I type it in, it's reflected back down here in the, in the cell itself sales. And then we're going to put down income, how much money we're making from each sale. And then, so those are hard numbers. Those are numbers that we put in, which is just, which is just kind of one piece of data for each cell. But now I want to put in a dynamic piece of data. I want to put in a calculation. I want this to be the average that we earn from each sale. And so that now gives us a structure. We're going to show you a lot of the basis of spreadsheets just by showing you how these four columns work and the information that we put in. They're quite simple, as I say, but you can take them to make them very sophisticated based on these principles. Let's start with data types. We're going to start with a date. So we can just type in to this field, we can type in November 1st. Now, spreadsheets are smart enough to recognize the data type that you're putting in. If I put a dollar sign before a number, they know that it's a currency. If I put in a date like this, they know that it's, it's a date. And I can display the date in numerical format or in words and numbers format as it is. Now, spreadsheets are so smart that they recognize that if I put in November 1st, see how it's converted it here into numerical format in the top? That's pretty smart. I think we'll agree gets even smarter. You see that little square in the bottom there? If I click on that and drag it down, I'm going to convert the cell into a range of cells. Remember I talked about ranges and the spreadsheet is going to recognize that I probably want to put sequential dates in. 
So when I release my cursor, it does. It puts the uh, count of days in uh, based on the range that I selected. I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to show you how it gets even more sophisticated. That's extending a range based on a single cell. Watch what happens if I put in November 8th. So we're going to say once a week that we're going to keep track. So instead of November 1st, I'm going to put in November 8th, and watch what happens. Uh, I select both days now for my range, and then I extend it down again with the clicking and pulling down on the square. And how intelligent is that? It recognizes that we want every seven days for it to be the date, once a week. And it fills in the range based on that every seven days. Isn't that amazing? That shows you the built-in intelligence of the spreadsheet. And all of these features are built to help us be more efficient in the management and manipulation of our information. So let's leave this at once a week. And let's say in week one, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fast forward the video now. I mean, I'm gonna enter in some sales numbers and some income for this range of dates. Okay, I've entered some just random numbers in here that could represent how many sales we made in each of these weeks and how much income we got from each of these weeks. Now, we want to change the format. We're happy to leave the sales numbers as they are because that's just units sold. That could be just a straight up number. But here under income, I want to change this into currency. So I select all of the, the, the range that I want, or I could simply collect in the very top of the column and I can go under the format menu, go under number, and I can choose to change the number to a currency. I can choose to change it to US dollars or I can change it to another currency if I choose to. I'm gonna change this to US dollars and now we see that the format has changed. It's got the dollar sign and it's got the cent sign added. Now it is where it gets exciting though. This next field here, this next cell, I wanna make a calculation cell. I want this cell to calculate the average sale based on that income. So this is going to be a calculation. And how we set up a calculation, I'm gonna show you the manual way. We can use these tools up here, which will help us build calculations, but we can also just click in the, in the, formula, in the formula field, and I'm gonna say it equals, and I just put in the equal sign, and then I'm gonna say it equals the income, I click on the cell, and there's a reason I click on the cell as opposed to typing in the number. I click on the cell because I want it to calculate on it, and that's divided by the number of sales. And that tells me that the average sale for this week was $10.59. Now that is a calculation. The reason that we made the calculation happen on the cells instead of the numbers is what happens if we need to correct the sales number for this week? Maybe we actually sold 70 this week. And so now we see our average changes based on those numbers. Or we forgot, we, we missed a deposit and we actually sold $1,200 worth. And again, we see that the average changes based on those numbers. That shows you the beginning of the power of the calculation capabilities of Excel. This feature here alone, the ability to make one cell calculate based on another cell is in many ways the heart and what, what the whole spreadsheet revolution was built on. And it's just, it's just incremental from here. It just gets more and more complicated and, and more and more valuable as far as the calculations that we can occur, but they all are all still kind of subsets of this particular calculation. Now, this is where it gets cool because you saw me extend the range for dates. I can also extend the range for the cells. Now you see here, it says cell C2 divided by cell B2. These are the designations, C and B. If I extend this down, it will then take and it will include uh, and change based on the, the, uh, based on the row it's in, what the calculation cells are. So if we that, now click on the third row, the calculation, it changes to C3 divided by B3 and so on, so forth, all the way down. You'll see it changes with each of the different rows that I go into. And that's the incredible power of these, of these automatic calculations that are built in. Now I did this first calculation manually, but what I wanna do now is I wanna go down to the end of our range and I wanna know what our total income is. So I'm gonna put in a little total here and I'm gonna say into this cell here, I want this to equal all of these. So how do we create that calculation? I say it equals the sum, and then I highlight the range, hit return, and it will calculate the sum of all of the different uh, figures within this range of cells. That's the 
way that I think people who have been using spreadsheets for a while, because we just know a lot of these different basic calculation terms, but we could also just click here in this field and then choose this function tool here, which allows us to choose the sum. And if we choose the sum, it then fills it in. We select the range that we want it and hit return and we get the calculation. So if we change any of the numbers here inside of this, you'll see that the sum changes with that, as does the average. Did you notice there, when I pulled down this menu, that there was another calculation that was available to us as well? Did you see in the functions, it also had average, count, maximum, minimum? So if I'd wanted to, instead of putting in the equation for the average here, I could have just used the average function here. Now, that is really the simplest way to go over the basic functions of the spreadsheet. Now, I think in a lot of ways, that basic application that we've just looked at of calculations, averages, columns, rows, that teaches you the basics of all spreadsheets. All spreadsheets are built on those basic processes. We can do some other simple things, like we can make information a little easier to understand by choosing cells and coloring cells, changing the font, etc. But there's another aspect of the spreadsheets other than the entering of the data. It's the organizing of the data to make it make sense to us, which makes spreadsheets incredibly valuable for doing business analytics and just being in control of your numbers. So creating calculations, very useful. But what happens if we want to know, say, which is our best, best, best? which is our best month for sales and which is our worst month for sales. So I can go through and I can kind of noodle it out and figure out here, but instead I can sort based on the information in the cells. And I could choose to sell, to sort this based on my average month sales. And all I do is watch this. I click here on this drop down menu and I say, sort this sheet from A to Z. And a little bit of magic again happens here is it's going to then sort all of the information that's in these cells from the smallest number to the largest number, but it's in this column, in the sales column. And it says November 15th, that week was our smallest number of sales, whereas November 29th was our largest number of sales where we had the most sales. So it reorganizes the information and it doesn't just reorganize the column, but it organizes the whole sheet, recognizing that the date is related to the number of sales, is related to the income, is related to the average, that there's a relationship laterally with all of this information as well. But again, if I was trying to analyze my business, the number of sales might not be as important to me as the total income, or even more important perhaps, is what's my average sale? For which month am I making the most money from each sale? So again, I can use the drop down menu over here and again, resort the sheet based on that information. And it turns out that November is my worst month. Whereas the one that we thought was our worst month of sales, we had our highest average sales per, 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 uh, per the highest average per sale that month. So this is where the analyzing of the data and the manipulation of the data comes in. And again, a very simple example of the power of the spreadsheet for this application. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is how we use spreadsheets for managing other data. Spreadsheets are kind of the perfect intermediary between different applications that contain data, things like accounting packages or research tools. All of those tools, all of the different packages, if you want to export information from them, they're going to boil it down into a database format, into something that's a logical database, which we can then import into our spreadsheet in order to manipulate that information and to be able to work it the way that we want. So Google Sheets, as all of the other spreadsheets do as well, supports multiple data type formats. And those formats really break down to three basic formats, I think. And we can see them here. If I choose this, uh, this document here, and I choose to download this document, you can see I can download this document as an Excel spreadsheet, an XLS, which means you can open it natively in Microsoft Excel, probably the most popular spreadsheet other than Google Sheets. I'm sure maybe it's more popular, but it's been around longer. Into Microsoft Excel, you can also export it into these two formats here, which you are going to see a lot. CSV, and TSV. These are comma separated values and tab separated values. What that means is the uh, information is going to come in rows and columns and it's going to use either tabs. If you're entering data and you hit the tab key, it's going to have tabs between each of the columns for information or it's going to have commas 
between each of the rows for, desert, for demarking the information. It means that we can import into our spreadsheet and work with data from a variety of different applications. I'll do it quickly. One of the other thing, I'll do it quickly and show you. And I actually, to show it to you, I'm gonna create a second sheet in this document. One of the cool things within Google Sheets is you can have multiple sheets within the same document and they can relate back and forth to each other. So you can create increasingly complex documents using this feature. But I'm opening a second sheet here so that I can import into here, I can import content from my from my computer's hard drive. And I'm just gonna navigate through into my uh, into my downloads folder. And I was doing some research on keywords for a video. And here is the keyword research that I did. And you can see that I brought it from whichever application it did, it came in, but you can see that CSV. You can see that format that we were talking about. And here comes the different questions. And here is that data that was imported. It has keywords. It has uh, some other statistics based on this is a this is a research document to help me determine what the best title is going to be for a YouTube video. It doesn't really matter what the what the content is. It's I can sort the information as I've now imported it here into this spreadsheet. So this intermediary, the fact that uh, Google Sheets works and plays well with others. We can import information from Microsoft or from these comma or tab delimited formats, and we can export our information so that it can be ingested by those applications as well. Learning to master the spreadsheet is one of the most valuable tools that you can do in order to really take control of your the business aspect of your computer and online life. Spreadsheets continue to evolve, but they still harken back to the most basic and simple principles that were there in 1979 in VisiCalc. <laughs> One has to wonder where we'd be without the humble spreadsheet. Well, I hope you found today's video to be instructional and informational. And if you did find value, please, a like and a share and perhaps a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Now, if you have any questions or comments, other videos you want to see, I always look forward to your comments in the YouTube comments. I read each and every one, so share with me there. And before we leave, I want to take this opportunity to invite you to join us for one of our weekly webinars on Webinar Wednesday. Every week here at Dotto Tech, we host a free tutorial webinar on some aspect of productivity or content creation. It's called Webinar Wednesdays. They're free. The link is right here. I would love to see you join us. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.